Hi, this is Deb Watson, and in this video, I'm going to share some useful tips on painting figures in watercolor. I paint a lot of figures. Nothing adds more interest to any landscape than a human figure. Since my paintings are very realistic, I make my figures realistic too, so they'll match. But a good place to start with painting figures is with some small gesture sketches. After some general tips, I'll paint these figures in real time and share my most valuable tips on painting realistic figures. Any figure, whether realistic or not, needs to have the correct proportions to look right. The most common mistake is having the head too big. Heads are small. In adults, your body is seven times the length of your head. So, start with the small head and a carrot shape for the rest of the body. If you jump into doing the arms and legs, they may be out of place. Decide where the waist is first and that can help you get the arms and legs in proportion too. Once you're okay with the proportions, you can add some simple clothes, but don't overdo it. For small figures, black, white, or red clothing usually looks best. And if there are more than one figure in a flat landscape, keep all the figures' heads about the same height to get the perspective right. If one guy is much farther away, start with his head on the same line as the closest figures and the perspective will be correct. Now overall, far away people are smaller, but their heads stay on the same level. This is only true on flat landscapes. On hilly landscapes, your perspective would be different. I usually trace the outline of my figures onto my watercolor paper, so that's how I'm going to start the next demonstration. If you want to practice your drawing, try just tracing the main points you need to get the proportions correct, like trace a dot at the top and sides of the head and on the shoulders, and then draw the parts in between. To paint figures, you need the local color, that would be like the orange in an orange shirt, and the shadow color. In this top, I'm painting the shadow color first. I'll let that dry before I paint the local color over top the shadows. The advantage to painting the shadows first is that you can soften the edges on the shadows with the next coat of paint. I'm doing the pants the opposite way local color first, dry, then shadow color. Either way will work, but don't forget your shadows and don't paint really light, wimpy shadows. Generally, the brighter the light is, the darker the shadows will be. This photo had very bright light, but I'm gonna keep the figures and the shadows fairly light in value until I get the background established. It will be easier to judge how much color I want if everything in the painting has at least an initial coat of paint first. For the skin, I'm using a touch of orange for the local color, but only just a touch. White people aren't really white, but they may have only the barest hint of color in the bright sunshine. I'm using brown for the shadow color, and I'm still keeping it fairly light. If you paint a medium value figure against a medium value background, you probably won't like it. You'll be time ahead if you think about the values that you're going to put behind your figures before you start painting them. And if you don't like your pencil line showing through the light areas of paint, try making your own graphite paper. 
Just rub a pencil onto a clean sheet of paper until you've covered the whole surface with graphite. Homemade graphite paper will give you lines that are easy to erase. For the bottom grass area, I mixed cobalt turquoise with yellow. For the area above it, I added a little more thalo blue and some gold. Did you notice that I used a large brush for the bigger areas and then I switched to a smaller brush for the smaller areas? For the dark background, I'm dipping my brushes in Perlin Green, Thalo Blue, and Thalo Turquoise. You can add a little green gold if you want it greener, but these dark colors will make a luscious dark background. Can you see how the light figures seem to pop out of the dark background? I'll probably add a little more color to the figures once I have the background established.
Before this completely dries, I'm touching in some pyrrole red in the dark area. Pyrrole is a fairly opaque red and it holds stone against the dark. Then I'm gonna dot in some opaque white in the middle area. And I pull a little white, a few dots, up into that red to tie the two areas together. Now both the hat bands look the same to me. They were kind of like bookends. So I lifted up the one on the right. I'm gonna add a little bit more color to the clothes. And warm up the shadows on the left lady's legs. This painting is about done. Figures can be so interesting. They're fun to paint, they're fun to draw, and if you want precision and you want to trace, that's okay, go right ahead. Just have fun, enjoy your figures, and be sure you have light figures with dark backgrounds or dark or well-saturated figures with light backgrounds, and you'll find success. Happy painting.